So Samsung just released its lineup of the S20s, the S20, the S20 Plus, and the S20 Ultra 5G. And one particular thing caught my attention, which I guess it's fairly new in the market, but it's been around for a little while, the eSIMs. And we're gonna talk a bit about those after this intro. Alright guys, welcome back. So we're going to cover three things today. Number one, what is an actual eSIM? Number two, what are the benefits of the eSIM? And number three, which phones currently utilize eSIMs? So let's go ahead and get started with the first one. So what is an eSIM? eSIM is an embedded subscriber identification module. And what this basically means is it allows you to identify your self on a carrier's network and allow connectivity between the two so you actually have service on your phone. So think of it as an ID card for yourself on the carrier's network and that's what eSIM is. Now eSIM currently is kind of a dual function on most phones. It's not transitioned to where all the carriers only use eSIM. So you've got a lot of carriers that still use a physical chip to, that goes into your phone to identify who you are on the network and but there's one phone that is strictly eSIM which is a Motorola Razr. And when they first came out with it, they were the first phone to come out with just eSIM, so they don't use an actual physical card itself. Other phones currently in the market use a actual SIM card itself and it has a functionality to use eSIM. So what are the benefits of using an eSIM? So an eSIM allows you to have basically two numbers as long as you've got an actual chip and an eSIM uh, to use two numbers on one line. So if you're like me, for example, I might have one phone for my personal use, which is iPhone 11 Pro Max, and then I've got my work phone, which is the Samsung Galaxy Note 8, because I need two numbers and two separate phones to be able to separate my personal life and my professional life. And with this functionality of having an eSIM in the, in the market today, you'll have your actual SIM card, and then you'll have an electronic card onto your phone, which means you can have two lines on one phone, and you will not have the need to carry two physical phones. And the functionality of it actually works really well. So for example, on the iPhone 11 lineup, you can simply go into your settings and add an eSIM. And every time that someone calls you, it identifies you as a business incoming call. Or if you wanted to have an external call where you're calling out, you simply separate that by having it as a business line and you can use your business line to call out for your phone as well. So basically the same exact function of having two phones, but now you're just combining it into one. Same thing goes for text messages as well. The second benefit of having an eSIM is you being able to switch between networks without having the actual chip. Right now, with most carriers, you do need either a nano SIM or a normal SIM for your function for your phone to function. But I think as technology improves, most carriers will probably switch over to the eSIMs, which will get rid of completely having the actual chip, which means you're able to move from one network to the next network as long as your phone is capable of doing that and it is unlocked. If you are on a locked phone, if you're tied to a network, you won't be able to switch between networks because you're still tied to it. But if you are unlocked, you will be able to go from one carrier to another and not have the need to switch SIM cards because it will all be electronic. So that would make it so much easier to be able to switch between carriers. So now you're probably wondering, which is third thing, which phones actually carry or support eSIM technology. So currently in the market, you've got your iPhone X lineup, which is the XS, XS Max, XR, and the 11, 11 Pro, and 11 Pro Max. That is a mouthful. Thank you, iPhone. Uh, then you've got your Galaxy lineup, as well as your Samsung Galaxy Fold, as well as the new Samsung Galaxy S20, S20 Plus, S20 Ultra, which all support eSIM technology. As I mentioned earlier, the Motorola Razr was the first one that was launched with no physical SIM and only the eSIM card. So here's kind of where I'm at with what I want to be able to do. For right now, in my opinion, I'm still going to keep two separate phones just because if one phone goes down, I've got the capability of popping that actual SIM out and putting into the next phone. That way I'm still able to be fully functional from a business standpoint. The personal side of things, yeah, if I miss a call, if I miss a text, not a big deal. But from a business standpoint, I don't want to be in a position where I am down for a day or two days because my phone's in repair or if I have to go buy a new phone, I wanna be able to just pop my SIM into my other phone and be able to use it. So in my opinion, there's still some benefit of having two separate phones, but overall, if I'm able to combine it into one, that is a nice feature to have. That way I'm only carrying one phone and it's not as bulky, it's much easier to travel with and things of that nature. So 
What I want you guys to do is I want you to go down in the comment section, let me know what your thoughts are, especially if you're currently carrying two phones or if you are on a setup where you've got an eSIM and an actual SIM card and how you are liking it or disliking it. So go down in the comment section, below the thumbs up button, hit that and leave a comment below. Let me know what your thoughts are. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I will see you next time. Goodbye.